The newest battle over Obamacare could be back at the Supreme Court a whole lot sooner than most expected. This week, the justices granted Liberty University's request to reopen its case against the new law, meaning it could be back on the fast track to the high court. Joining us now to talk about what comes next, Senior Counsel for the Constitutional Accountability Center, Elizabeth Wydra, and former Deputy Assistant Attorney General Tom Dupree. Good to see you both. Be here, Shannon. Thanks, Shannon. All right, so this has been pending for a while. This week, the court says, all right, we're going to reopen this case that Liberty University had originally stopped at the appellate court level. It's sending it back to that Fourth Circuit, just one level below the Supreme Court. Uh, and Liberty, Tom, has challenged this law on different grounds and added something new as well. What do we expect? They have. They, they are taking a slightly different approach than the challenge that was heard the first time. Liberty's current arguments raise some challenges to the employer mandate, and they've also got a very intriguing argument where they're saying that their religious liberties are being violated and that they're being compelled by Obamacare to act in a way that is antithetical to their deeply held religious beliefs. So Liberty's arguments have not been resolved by the Supreme Court. They've got another chance. They're going to get their day in court. They're going to get to go back to the Court of Appeals and have another shot at this. And uh, Elizabeth, how do you think it'll be received there? Because one way or the other, whoever loses there is going to appeal it right back to the Supreme Court. Well, I'm sure that whoever loses uh, will appeal it to the Supreme Court, but I don't think that this is necessarily as big a deal as some foes of Obamacare would like it to be. You know, look, the Supreme Court, in an opinion written by conservative Chief Justice John Roberts, upheld the Affordable Care Act as within Congress's constitutionally enumerated powers. And I don't think that this case is going to change that at all. I think that when you get back to the Fourth Circuit, and by the way, the fact that the Supreme Court sent this back to the Fourth Circuit should not be taken as any sort of reflection on the justices' views of the case's merits. It's, it's really this, re, this remand order is sort of just proper it's housekeeping. It's procedural. It's sort of a yeah. technicality to it's get it back. It's a routine housekeeping order uh, that the court often does in the wake of a big case like the Obamacare decision. But I think in the Fourth Circuit that these claims are going to be rejected just as they were in the district court when it heard Liberty's claims uh, back in the day. And so, you know, here we have claims that are against the religious exemptions in the Affordable Care Act. And there are exemptions for people who whose deeply held beliefs do preclude them from engaging in certain sorts of insurance um, behavior. But those exemptions are based on exemptions from the Internal Revenue Code that have been upheld for decades against challenges based on some of the same constitutional principles that Liberty is using in this case. And, and one of the main things that we've seen is that there are a number of uh, employers objecting to this HHS mandate that there has to be access if you provide insurance to coverage that includes access um, to certain contraception and, uh, you know, some, the morning after pill, very controversial for some people. Um, and many of these, uh, there are now 40 some lawsuits, I believe, on that particular measure. Now, by Liberty getting this case to go back to the Fourth Circuit, though, Tom, they sort of jump ahead of the pack and mean that that particular issue that's being litigated, and it's been a split all over the country so far, um, that issue may get to the Supreme Court a lot faster because of this case. I, I think that's right. Certainly the spotlight is going to be on the proceedings in the Fourth Circuit. And I take Elizabeth's point that, look, I think it's a little premature for Liberty to be declaring victory at this point. When they argued the case the first time, they got somewhat of a chilly reception from mm -hmm. the judges. So I remember it well. You know, it's not exactly <laughs> a circuit. slam dunk. But at the same time, I think we all should be mindful of the fact that when people first started challenging Obamacare on Commerce Clause grounds and said this exceeds Congress Congress's power under the Commerce Clause, that argument was poo-pooed by law professors and other sophisticated observers who all kind of scratched their beards and said, this is a kookamamie right-wing theory hatched by the Federalist Society and the far right wing of the Republican Party. And lo and behold, they were right. It got a majority of the Supreme Court justices. So although I wouldn't say liberty has a slam dunk at this point, it might be a little premature to declare this case entirely over. And, and, and in the opinion that we got earlier this summer, which was on different grounds, I mean, a number of the justices did sign on to an opinion that said essentially the law has to comply with the rest of the Constitution, including these religious exercise uh, clauses. So do you think there's any chance, Elizabeth, this time that the decision, if it gets to the Supreme Court, ends differently than the case did in June? I don't. And frankly, I don't even think it, it, it has that great of a chance to get to the Supreme Court because I think the Fourth Circuit is going to apply long established precedent that deals with religious liberty and exemptions for certain um, religious activities and beliefs and find that the uh, employer mandate and the rest of the Affordable Care Act that's relevant here falls fully within those precedents and within the Constitution's text and history. All right. As this case develops, we want both of you to come back and we'll see how it plays out.
Terrific. Tom thank Elizabeth, you, thank you both. Thank you. Thanks.